Hi everyone, a very good morning to all of you. I hope you all are doing good and preparing well for the upcoming examinations. I am Gulapsa, your mentor for Finance Current Affairs and I welcome you once again to another session of RBI 247 whereby on a regular basis we discuss the current financial happenings around us. But before starting the session, let's first uh, have a look at this app. So you can make use of this app to get access to all of these features and this app is surely going to help you because all the past year papers and even the live video sessions, the monthly magazines all are available on this app. So make use of this app. If you have question papers in previous years, ke, so you might have to visit certain websites. You need not do that. You can get all of these consolidated at one place. That is this app. So use it use karu. And let's get started with the session. So today we are going to discuss two very important news articles. The first is about the GST network, which has been recently included into the account aggregator framework by RBI. And the second news talks about ICICI Bank, which has become the first bank in India to have launched certain financial products in the gift city. So in dono news, ko samajhte hai, starting with the very first one, that is... Uh, the inclusion of the GST network into the account aggregator framework. Isko samajhne se pehle, there are two very important terms. The first term is this GST network. Iske baare mein aapko clarity honi chahiye. And the second is the account aggregator framework. Thik hai? To sabse pehle, in do news ko, in do terms ko samajhte hai, beginning with GSTN. So GSTN stands for Goods and Services tax net network. It is basically the principal database uh, for anything that is rel related to GST. So GST related jitne bhi cheeze hai. For that, it, this is the network, that is the database that keeps records of every financial transactions that has happened over the or related to GST. As you can see here, if we talk about GSTN, Goods and Services Tax Network, it was established initially in the year 2013 as a not-for-profit, non-government, private limited company. So, it as a private limited company banaya gaya tha under the Companies Act under Section 8. So, Section 8 ke under isko banaya gaya tha. Now, Section 8, we have studied n number of times and by, no, by now, you should be aware that Section 8 of the Companies Act 2013 or Section 25 of the Companies Act 1956 talks about any company that is registered as a not-for-profit organization. So, if any company, if NPO, which objective is non-profit, Section 8 companies are so initially it was established that way and it has helped the government to have access or to track all the financial transactions related to GST and also to provide a lot of services to the taxpayers in India. Okay, if we talk about the composition of GST and GST and ki composition, ki baat karoge, then out of this 100% of the ownership of GST and since it is a private limited company, 51% of the stake was with the private entities, which included banks like HDFC Bank and n number of other, other private players. And 49% of the ownership was with the government. Now the government here, out of the government, the central government, we have the central government and then we have the state government. So central government or state government, dono ke pass 24.5% stake thi. ठीक है तो अब तक ये एक प्राइवेट लिमिटेड कंपनी था बट रिसेंटली द जीएसटी काउंसिल हैज एक्सेप्टेड द प्रपोजल एंड नाउ द जीएसटी काउंसिल हैज अग्रीड दैट इट विल टेक ओवर दिस 51% स्टेक फ्रॉम द प्राइवेट एंटिटीज एंड नाउ जीएसटीएन विल बी अ फुल्ली गवर्नमेंट एंटिटी सो ये आप यहां पे देख सकते हो now it will turn, it will be turned into a government entity. So, ye jo naya changes, naya changes aaye hain GSTN mein, that should be very much clear to all of you. Ab hume GSTN samaj a gaya hai, now let's talk about this account aggregator framework. Account aggregator framework ko samajhne ke liye, aapko bas ye samajhna hai ki account aggregators kya hote hain. Aggregator is an English word, kaafi easy hai samajhna, that aggregates things, right? 
that combines together things. So similarly here the account aggregator refers to an NBFC. This is an NBFC, a non-bank finance company which is regulated by RBI. So it is a it is an RBI regulated NBFC. Ab iska kaam kya hai NBFC ka? So the work of these NBFC is to provide financial informa information of a consumer provide financial information of a consumer from the financial information providers to the regulated financial information users. Or ye information this account aggregator will only provide if it gets the explicit consent of the individual or the consumer. For example, let's say you have an account in SBI and uh, you have taken certain other loans and now recently you want to take a loan from an NBFC or for example you want to take a housing loan or aap kisi housing finance company ko approach karte ho to initially kya hota tha ab tak kya hota tha you need to submit all the information or the financial information for example aapke paas assets kitne hain what what all are the loans that you have taken till now and all other details all all other financial related details regarding to you so that the other company the housing finance company can I can understand the credibility of you of repaying the loan so ab kya hota tha aapko physical copies lekar aane padte the aur submit karne padenge agar aapko loan lena hai but with this account aggregator framework since you have an account with sbi aapke sbi ke sath account hai aur sari information whatever you have done till now financially all are record all the records are with sbi now this account aggregator ka kaam ab aata hai that you as a consumer or an individual can give your consent to the account aggregator to share your financial related data or information to the housing finance company to ye kya karegi account aggregator aapke sare data sbi se legi but your explicit consent should be there yahan se information liya and that information will be provided to this housing finance company Now the question arises kya ye account aggregator iske paas to sare data store ho jayenge no so this account aggregator will act as a consent manager which will be data blind that means it will facilitate the transfer of data from the financial information providers jahan pe aapke already accounts hain ya jinke paas aapke financial data already hain wahan se lekar to any other financial entity which is regulated by any of the financial sector regulator and that comes under the account aggregator framework जो जो लोग जुड़े हैं उनको अगर आप इंफॉर्मेशन भेजना चाहते हो दैट यू कैन डू सो सो इट विल फैसिलिटेट द ट्रांसफर बट इट विल नॉट स्टोर एनी काइंड ऑफ डेटा विद इट सेल्फ सेकेंड थिंग इफ यू फील लाइक यू डू नॉट वॉन्ट टू शेयर ऑल द डेटा यू वॉन्ट टू शेयर सर्टन डेटा एंड यू डू नॉट वॉन्ट टू शेयर सर्टन अदर डेटा दैट इंफॉर्मेशन यू कैन प्रोवाइड टू दिस एंड दो सिलेक्टेड डेटा बाई यू दैट ओनली विल बी शेयर विद द financial information user so this is the work of the account aggregator agar aapko yaad hoga then in the month of august we have also discussed about this account aggregator framework whereby we talked about how sebi has also joined this account aggregator framework and recently in the month of november uh, gstn that is the G, uh, the goods and services tax network has joined the account aggregator framework and thus the news that we are studying here so it says that recently rbi has included gstn as a financial information provider so it will act as a financial information provider under the account aggregator framework is taraf aayegi wo and why has this been done this has been done so that the rbi can facilitate the cash flow based lending to msmes to so msmes ko loans mil paaye based on whatever cash flows are involved in their businesses and that information will be stored with gstn kyunki sare financial related data of businesses are with gstn network which is the database of anything that is related to gst so they will act as a financial information provider theek hai 
एंड फॉर द स्पेसिफिक पर्पज जी एस टी एन का फाइनेंशियल सेक्टर रेगुलेटर कौन होगा फॉर एग्जाम्पल म्यूचुअल फंड का फाइनेंशियल सेक्टर रेगुलेटर कौन है सेबी सिमिलरली फॉर जी एस टी एन द फाइनेंशियल सेक्टर रेगुलेटर विल बी नन अदर देन डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ रेवेन्यू अंडर द मिनिस्ट्री ऑफ फाइनेंस तो ये इंफॉर्मेशन आपके लिए इंपॉर्टेंट है एंड यू नीड टू रिमेंबर इट और इसके अलावा what will be the financial information what all financial information will be provided by gstn as a financial information provider under the account aggregator framework so information related to gst returns that is specifically form gstr1 and form gstr थ्री बी तो जी एस टी रिटर्न थ्री बी एंड जी एस टी रिटर्न वन सो दीज टू फॉर्म आर दाइनेंशियल इन्फॉर्मेशन दैट विल बी प्रोवाइडेड बाई जी एस टी एन अंडर द अकाउंट एग्रीगेटर फ्रेमवर्क वाई हैज वाई आर दे इंक्लूडेड दिस यू शुड रिमेंबर इट इज स्पेसिफिक इट इज स्पेसिफिकली फॉर एम एस एम ई सो दैट दे कुड बी फेसिलिटेटेड एंड दे दे आर फेसिलिटेटेड टू टेक लोन बेस्ड ऑन देयर कैश फ्लोज मूविंग फॉरवर्ड आई होप दिस इज क्लियर टू यू this you can go through it i have already discussed and this talks about the account aggregator framework under which it talks about financial sector regulators so who all are the financial sector regulator under the account aggregator framework we have rbi we have sebi the market regulator then we have for the insurance sector the irdai for the pension sector the pfrda and recent addition is department of revenue for gstn and this encompasses the list of those who will be providing financial information under the account aggregator which will include bank banking companies nbfcs asset management company depositories then we have gstn as well as any other entity that may be identified from time to time so i hope this is clear to you moving forward to the next news that is about icici bank which has become the first bank in india to offer certain financial products specifically loans against deposit and dollar bonds to the nris the non resident indians that too in its branch at gift city to so gift city mein inhone ye provide karna shuru kiya hai so this becomes important name of the bank now a question for you a very interesting question i hope most of you must be knowing it what is the full form of icici here to ye aapko batana hai comment section mein moving forward loans against deposit kya hota hai aur dollar bonds kya hota hai so the concept related to loans against deposit means and it's very simple from the term itself kya hai that you need to put or keep or pledge certain thing as collateral while taking a loan so here you need to keep your deposit so any kind of fixed deposit that you have you can keep that or pledge that as a collateral and against that the banks will be providing you with the loan so that is known as loan against deposit so this is the crude meaning of lad loan against deposit moving forward dollar bonds dollar bonds kya hote hain so these are those bonds which are issued not in a currency not in the currency not in the currency in which the company the registered company is for example agar india mein issue ho raha hai then it is not issued in indian rupee but it is issued in dollar that dollar denominated bonds which is issued outside of us is known as dollar bonds so i hope both the concepts are clear to you moving forward and understanding what are the new or what are the innovative financial products that has been launched by icici in the gift city branch so beginning with the very first one it is loan against deposits so yahan pe inhone bataya hai that here any nri any non resident indian can take a loan from the icici branch at the gift city against any of its rupee non resident external fixed deposits to so, unko loan milegi and that loan will be in a foreign currency that is agar koi nri us mein reh raha hai that person can get a loan from india from icici bank at gift city in dollars against any of its fixed deposits any of its nre deposits अगर उसका कोई भी एनआरए डिपॉजिट है अगेंस्ट दैट दैट पर्सन कैन गेट अ लोन नाउ दिस लोन व्हाई वुड एन एनआरए रिक्वायर सो दिस 
Loan can be taken by an NRI who wants to meet any of its short term requirements and hereby what is the benefit that ICICI Bank is trying to give? What is the USP of this loan against deposits? So that the USP is that the NRI did not uh, the, the NRI did not break the fixed deposits that it has with India. Usko break karne ki zarurat nahi hai. Because if you break, suppose a fixed deposit, it's for three years and you break it in one year or two years, then you need to pay a penalty. So you need not pay the penalty against those fixed deposits. You can get a loan that too in a foreign currency by ICICI now. And according to this loan against deposits, people or the consumers can take up to 95% of their deposit value. If it is 100 crores, then you can get up to 95 crores tak aapko loan de diya jayega against your deposit. And finally, uh, the feature, you can get the loan for a flexible tenure. So it is a short term cash requirement, short term ke liye hoga, but it has a flexible tenure if you want it for one month or three months or six months that you can take and the rate of interest could be either fixed or it could be floating based on the market. Now here a term has ap appeared that is NRE, non-resident external account. Ab ye NRE kya hota hai? So these are those accounts where an NRI can put his money. So any money, suppose US mein koi NRI hai and it is earning in dollars. He can deposit his dollar amount into India. But India mein kaise deposit hoga? That will be deposited in terms of rupee. So for example, a person in, in US. So there is a person in US who is earning in, who is earning in dollars. He can put his money in India in a bank. For example, ICICI mein hi wo deposit kar raha hai. That deposit will now be in rupee. So that means that such money involves exchange rate risk because suppose he brings $100. This $100 will be converted into rupee and then it will be deposited against his account. The facility or the benefit of this NRE account is that if this NRI wants to take back his money, wants to repatriate his money back to US, he can do so against no charge. So this is the facility provided by NRE accounts. And the full form of NRE is non-resident external rupee account, which is also known as NRE. Theak hai? So here it is also written that it is a rupee denominated account that an NRI can open and they can deposit their foreign currency earnings. Jo bhi dollar currency earnings hai, they can deposit, but it will be deposited in terms of rupee and it allows for full repatriation of the funds from the account to the NRI's country of residence whenever required. So whenever the person will require that amount could be transferred free of cost and this is the benefit of NRE. I hope NRE aapko clear ho gaya moving forward and talking about the second feature of the financial products launched by ICICI that is dollar bond. So it is an alternative investment that an NRI can do and here the benefit that ICICI would be providing is that there will be more than 50 marquee issuers or companies. So these are very valuable in issuers or companies who in who are making huge profits. So in K in K pass you can make investments so and NRI can make investments in these 50 marquee issuers or companies and that investment will be in dollar terms. Theak hai? Toh ye dollar bonds honge. Now if you want to know more about the types of bonds in the international bond market, then you can go to this video which is already uploaded on our channel anujindal.in. Wahan pe you'll get a clear idea or a more uh, detailed idea about euro bonds, parallel bonds and foreign bonds. So wahan se jaakar aap apni knowledge ko aur enhance kar sakte ho. Moving forward, what else is there? So apart from these two important features of the financial products that ICICI Bank will be providing to the NRIs, there are these three accounts as well. These three features or products that will be issued by ICICI Bank. The first is the global current account. As we all know, current account kya hota hai? Current account is a non-interest bearing account. So, ye aapko, so this non-interest bearing account can be made use by the NRI to deposit their money 
uh, with ICICI Bank. The feature that ICICI Bank provides is that you can deposit your money in foreign currency itself. So if you want to invest in the dollar or in the British pound, in the great uh, British pound, pound sterling mein karni hai ya fir euros mein karna hai that you can do so in this current account provided by ICICI at the gift city center. The second is the global savings account. So here the NRIs can deposit their money for a short period of time and this deposit can be done in foreign currency only. Aisa nahi ki aapko rupee mein hi deposit karna hai. Aap dollars mein invest karo, aap euros mein invest karo. Aap kisi external foreign currency mein invest karo, you will be earning an interest on it. So ICICI will be providing interest on such savings account. And third is the term deposits. Now this is an important because they are similar to the foreign currency non-resident deposits. So foreign currency non-residence deposits kya hota hai? So if any NRI wants to deposit their, wants to deposit their money in India, they can do so under the FCNR. But however, the minimum lock-in periods are involved. In case of FCNR, it is one year. Okay? That means you can deposit in foreign currency. If you are earning in dollar, you can invest or you can deposit your money in fixed deposits in dollar terms only. But a minimum lock-in period would be of one year. However, under this term deposits, which is made available by ICICI Bank, the minimum lock-in period is just seven days. That is, you get the benefit of a term deposit, but the lock-in period is of just of seven days. And you can make deposits, as I have mentioned, in currencies such as euros, US dollars, and even in British pound sterling. So this was the news that I wanted to discuss with you. I hope it is clear to you. Now let's move forward to the questions. Moving forward with the first question, which says, Recently, that is in the month of November, Dash has been included by RBI as a Dash under the account aggregator framework. Very simple, we have discussed right now. Moving forward to the next question, which says, which of the following statements regarding the account aggregator framework is or are true? Moving with the first statement, which says, account aggregators are actually NBFCs regulated by RBI. Second statement says RBI, SEBI, NABARD, F PFRDA, GST and IRDAI all are financial sector regulator under the account aggregator framework. And third, account aggregators enable the flow of data between the financial information providers and the financial information users with explicit consent of the consumers. So you need to identify the correct statements. Right, very simple question. Moving forward to the next question, which says, which of the following is the first bank to launch deposit linked loan and dollar bonds for NRIs in the gift city? Again, simple question, which we have discussed. One marker question, ban sakta hai aise. And lastly, we have a question for you, which says, which of the following is true about NRE account, non-resident external account? Ab aapko yahan pe ek cheez jo samajni hai, let me tell you that these are rupee denominated. Here you will never get R written here because it is commonly referred as NRE. So the first statement based on that says it is a rupee denominated account that NRIs can open. Second, it allows full repatriation of funds from the account to the NRI's country of residence. If it is US, then it is country of residence whenever required. And third, since this account is maintained in rupees, the depositor is exposed to exchange risk. So you need to identify the correct statements and you need to answer them all in the comment section. Again, the answers are also provided here uh, uh, in the PDF and this PDF will be made available to you over the telegram group now i also have an information for all of you guys the information is that uh, if you like the way we teach and if you have anything regarding us you can provide your detailed feedback to us on this number the number is double nine double nine four double six double two five so let me write down the number for you double nine double nine four double six double two five so you can save this number and you can provide your detailed framework and 
a detailed feedback and the feedback could be both positive as well as negative agar aapko uh, if you like the way we teach or the content that we provide you paid over the youtube platform or even in the course and if you have certain suggestions for us then you are most welcome to give your detailed feedback over this number you can also call us over this number and uh, this will help us of course as teachers to improve and if we get positive feedbacks then yes it is going to boost our morale so we expect that you will provide your feedback and this was all that i wanted to share with you i hope you all are preparing and are motivated to uh, excel in the examination so this was all for today uh thank you and bye bye